Inside this video right here, we're going to talk about trauma tips, giving you my best trauma tips from paramedic to you. Let's dive into it. I want to help decrease failure rates for NREMT, for EMT school, for paramedic school. Watch these videos, watch this content, and believe me, you will start to understand EMS medicine. Anybody out there that wants to serve their community as an EMT or a paramedic should be able to do that. And I'm here as a paramedic coach to help you achieve that. Hey everyone, it's Paramedic Coach. Be sure to annihilate, smash that like button down below. And if you are new here, click subscribe and hit that notification bell because that is how you join us here and join the Paramedic Coach Army. We're talking trauma today, giving you my best trauma tips. Here we go. Let's start with what exactly is mechanism of injury? Well, it's gotta do with how the patient was injured and how much force was applied to that patient. Now, what is a high mechanism of injury? If you have multi-body systems that are impacted, okay, that is gonna be something. Let's say a patient has spinal cord injury with a leg injury, or they have injury to their lung, injury to their leg, injury to their lung, injury to the back, injury to their head, injury to their legs, multi-body, okay? falls from over 20 feet for an adult, think about it. Let's say an adult, let's say he's six feet tall, okay? Six times three, well, that's gonna be about uh, 18 feet, okay? Well, 20 feet is over three times what a six foot tall adult is. Anything over 20 feet as an adult, that's significant. 10 feet for a pediatric patient. Again, think about it. A baby falls from a crib, baby isn't very tall, 10 feet. Any motorcycle crash above 20 miles per hour, again, think about it. There's no covering that. All you have is the helmet. And imagine they're not wearing a helmet in a high speed motorcycle crash. There's nothing around you to protect you, okay? Now, here's one that you're gonna get asked on on a question at some point. Is death inside of a vehicle the same as your patient? A sneaky question, it's gonna be on there. So your patient is involved in, a, in an accident and the passenger has died before you've gotten there. But your patient's awake. Even if there's anything wrong with the patient, they still have been involved in a high MOI event. They're in the same car. Okay, so you're treated the same way, like they went through a severe trauma. Ejection from a vehicle, that could be any vehicle, could be a boat, a motorcycle, any vehicle. Ejection from a vehicle is severe. Intrusion into a vehicle means, is there impact coming into the compartment of the vehicle and how much, how much feet of intrusion would you say is coming in, or inches, or feet, however large it is. Okay, intrusion to the vehicle. Is the patient crunched in by the impact and they can't even move, okay? That's a high MOI event and here they are. Now, let me give you some more of my best trauma tips, but you had to know this first. So let's dive into the next little series. Here. Okay, friends, so what we're gonna talk about now is we're gonna talk about, through my eyes, kind of role playing through what a scene looks like and what you should be looking for assessing a patient uh, for a motor vehicle uh, accident. So the first thing I'm thinking about as I arrive on scene is how many patients do I have, how many vehicles, and how is the patient's vehicle impacted? Next, when I go up and assess my patients, okay, let's say I have one patient. I'm not worried about other ambulances. If I have multiple patients, I may need to call for other ambulances quickly, okay? Now let's just say, keep it simple, one patient to one car accident, okay? The other car is fine, everything's cool there with the other patient, one patient, one car. First thing I'm trying to figure out as I approach the car, what does the car look like? The back, the sides, the front. Is the patient safe in the car first? Then I assess the patient. Can they hear me? Are they awake? Okay, you may need to get uh, access to the car. Now, if they're awake in the car, great. That's good, okay? 
I mean, they're seat belted, great. I mean, or the airbag, before I even talk to them, and I'm going in here, and I'm pretending that the, the, I'm doing it, and the driver's here. I'm looking, is the glass shattered, okay? I'm looking, are the airbags deployed? Is there blood on the patient's face? Do I see blood anywhere in the vehicle? Are there other people in the back seat that I don't see, okay? That's what's happening when I first approach. Now from there, we gotta do, talk to the patient. Hey, my name's Evan, I'm a paramedic with the ambulance. What's going on today? Okay, what happened today, okay? What's bothering you right now, okay? Are you having difficulty with any of the following? Any breathing, any pain issues? Some of the first questions that I'll ask, but I'm always gonna start from the head or my way down. So if the patient is in the car, I'm gonna start off by assessing their head first. Okay, any pain here, any bumps here, okay? I'm gonna check their eyes, okay? How's your vision as I'm going through? Check the neck. Any pain back here, okay? Then while I'm here, I'm just gonna go right down the back. Lean forward slightly, any pain, okay? Then I'm right to my lung sounds. We know a big thing in trauma is pneumothorax. We can't miss that. So we're gonna do our lung sounds. So we're gonna listen front and back on lung sounds, quick. Any pain here in the abdomen or all the legs? Can you feel me here? 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 Equal grips, grab a quick pulse. That's your initial assessment with, I, that I'll do any more vehicle accident, and that's how you do that. Okay. False, which is another big thing. I'm gonna give you my initial assessment and thoughts on when I'm going to a fall victim. So the first thing with a fall victim is who fell. Well, what I mean by that is, well, think about it. If a patient fell and they're 85 years old and on a blood thinner, that could be more sinister than a 20 year old patient who's not on a blood thinner falling. Number two is where the fall occur and what was the height of that fall, what it was. So they slip out of a wheelchair and they kind of just slipped out of it and fall on their butt. Did a patient fall down a staircase? Did a patient fall from a roof, right? So we gotta think about these things, right? How long has a patient been on the floor for? Are they walking around now after the fall or not? The big one, did your patient lose consciousness, right? They lose, did they, did they, did they fall asleep? Okay, were they unresponsive? Okay, so let's talk about this real quick, okay? I'm gonna do a quick role play approaching the scene for you. So as I approach a scene, I'm looking around at my scene, I'm looking to see if there's any factors. Remember I said last time, I'm looking for blood, stuff like that? Same deal here. I'm looking for my scene, is anything abnormal? Then from there, what I'm gonna do is go find my patient, okay? I find the patient. Are they altered or are they alert? First thing, okay? A fall plus altered equals something sinister, okay? So that could be a head injury. That's the first thing I'm thinking right off the bat, okay? Not tunnel vision, but something I'm gonna, I'm gonna definitely look for, okay? An elderly patient, my first two questions I'm gonna ask, or any patient, really, okay? But especially in the elderly, is do you take any blood thinner medication, head trauma, okay, or, again, or any trauma, and then second is going to be, hey, do you, do you for the patient, do you remember passing out or for a bystanders, did they ever pass out if there's someone there? Now, people may not remember if they passed out or not, but sometimes you'll be surprised. They, they may remember, oh yeah, I fell, I just didn't feel right now I'm on the floor. They probably, probably did, okay? So the question is, you have to answer that question, did they lose or did they not? You gotta try to figure it out. Is it yes, no, or unknown, okay? It's not a yes or no, it's yes, no, or I don't know. But you gotta try to figure it out by family, friends, bystanders, what have you. Now, we start assessing our patient the same way, head, and we roll down, okay? So the real question here is, at any fall, do we have an isolated injury, maybe like a hip fracture, or a leg, somebody got a splint, or is it multi-body system, okay? Remember, back over here earlier, was our high MOI is multi-body systems. Is it the fall from height? or could it be from the fall because there's their body systems? That could be high MLI. Now, the final piece of the puzzle I wanna give you on trauma tips from, from my career is we're gonna be talking about here gunshot wounds, okay? So stabbings, gunshot wounds, what you wanna do with these patients. Now, here's the deal. Time is of the essence in any major trauma, but I'll tell you from experience, you're never gonna see people move faster than on a stabbing or a shooting call because time is of the essence. And my big pearl for you about any trauma is trauma is not the time for you to, lack of a better word, mess around on scene. 
A trauma, you need to beat feet. You need to move fast. So a trauma, you don't sit there and, you know, take your time. Trauma is when you need to get the patient in the ambulance, you need to ask questions, you need to treat the patient while moving them on and moving into the ambulance and transporting. Trauma, you don't wait on scene to do an IV in a trauma. In a trauma, you do it in route, okay? Okay, trauma, everything's in route. So we're moving. As soon as you're meeting the patient, you're getting them packaged to, to get out of the house to start moving. This is particularly important in obviously high MOI trauma, but we'll also with doing gunshot wounds because things can change fast. That pneumothorax can change to attention pneumothorax. Okay, and that that uh, that bullet. Remember here, we got large arteries here in the legs as well. So I've had many many patients that have been shot uh, in in the in the femurs. That's a lot of blood here. The pelvis gets a lot of blood in it if it has any any, any uh, wounds to it. Okay, you can store a lot of blood there. That's something you want to think about as well. Okay, remember your chest. This is your kill zone. Okay, basically from head to head to hips. This is your kill zone. Everything's right here. Okay. So that's something you want to think about as well. Like, you know, all the organs from here to here, okay? Then don't forget your legs. Okay, don't forget the top of the legs, okay? Femurs right there. Everything else is secondary to this main thing. Expose your patient to make sure in any trauma, if I give you my last tip, here it is. Be sure to expose your patient on a trauma. Do not be scared to expose your patient. And two, make sure you're talking while you're moving. You should not be sitting and waiting because the patient needs to get to hospital. They may need blood. You don't have blood. They need blood. In the link in the description down below is my paramedic coach course with the brand new NREMT Accelerator program. Students are getting amazing results on this. So click the link down below. Don't listen to me. Check out the student results of the program down below. You can meet some of our students and see all of the testimonials on the Paramedic Coach course and the NREMT Accelerator. The link's in the description down below. Check it out. And I want to thank all of you for tuning in. Thank you for the likes, the subscriptions, and thank you for watching this channel. I will see you next time. Cheers. Kept, oh, like everything that you were saying was just connecting all these all these you know links inside my brain and i i just knew right then and there um i have to have this program i have to have all the information that he's willing to give i need all of it i went through it i i spent the time and money in other areas and i'm, I'm just gonna let you guys know that uh this was everything i was searching for the whole time the first couple of videos i watched um when i noticed it, it just i i just immediately started connecting dots um, on some of these things I, I didn't have grasped. Went on there that I continued reviewing and I did it for about a month and you know, it, it helped a lot. Like I said, even after school and I took that test one time and I passed it. Your particular program, you have your students engaging and you have your students discussing and you have your students actually using your products. And I'm seeing time and time again, um, students that are coming in and announcing their new certification with National Registry. Results obviously passing the exam, doing it pretty quickly, 70 questions in about an hour. Um, well, you definitely are like how your videos are. Like I wasn't sure how it was gonna be, but you are how you, your videos are. So that was awesome. So people who are getting ready for paramedic school, or if you're getting ready to go in the Navy as a corpsman or as an Army medic, um, you want to prepare yourself. Evan, I know you've got a program that helps people prepare that way. So bottom line is, guys, you don't ever want to hear something for the first time with a bunch of other students. So if you're in a competitive learning environment, you don't want to hear about AFib for the first time where everybody else, you want to have an understanding of it before you walk in the room. From 120 questions, passing two sections, um, near passing one, and then I think two below passing to seven questions passing completely thousand seven thousand dollars for school plus everything else that you put into it all the time and all the time off work and family and everything it's to see people fail and fail and fail and then just quit which i know a couple of people who have i tend to say you know it doesn't hurt to have somebody right there to talk to you know send a question anytime i get the chance i'll, I'll gladly offer or advise them to sign up for you and your paramedic coach it's, it's truly 
helpful and amazing at what you do. I want to help decrease failure rates for NREMT, for EMT school, for paramedic school. Watch these videos, watch this content, and believe me, you will start to understand EMS medicine. Anybody out there that wants to serve their community as an EMT or a paramedic should be able to do that. And I'm here as a paramedic coach to help you achieve that.